mRNA-like phage display is another very important technique used by scientists in order to discover proteins that have high affinity for some target. And this is a very important tool that we use in the field of medicine and uh, in the pharmaceutical industry to discover new drugs and uh, determine better uh, delivery mechanisms uh, for better efficacy. And the main reason mRNA is emphasized and uh, highlighted uh, in industry is because relative to the other types of displays like phage display, mRNA allows us to create much more sophisticated and longer peptides than we can with uh, phage display. And uh, to give an example, uh, so uh, with phage display, we're typically limited in the number of amino acids with uh, about a billion approximately, one to 10 billion. Um, with a uh, mRNA display, we can generate proteins that are 10 to the 15th uh, amino acids in size, so much longer uh, proteins, several orders of magnitude larger, and this allows us to discover much more uh, potentially effective uh, proteins. And uh, just to write it out, so the goal with mRNA display is to discover proteins with high affinity for some target. And the target can be anything of interest. Uh, and so the way it works is we start out with a uh, DNA library. And so just a bunch of random DNA segments uh, in solution. And what we're going to do is we're going to translate or I'm sorry, transcribe the DNA into mRNA. And once the mRNA uh, has been created, we then ligate, we link the mRNA to a very important molecule referred to as pyromycin. And pyromycin is a critical molecule to remember in this process because it is what will allow us to link the genotype to the phenotype, the genes that encode the protein to the protein itself um, that will allow us to uh, perform a quasi-natural selection process later on. And so after we've linked the mRNA to pyromycin, uh, we're going to translate the mRNA into whatever protein it would code for. I'll try to write a little bit better. And uh, once we have determined uh, or translated the protein, the important thing that happens is in the ribosome, in the large ribosome subunit, we'll recall we have an EPA site, the acceptor site um, here. When pyromycin does is it will pretend to be as your uh, mRNA is being uh, translated by your large ribosomal subunit. Um, typically when you reach your stop codon at the end of your uh, mRNA sequence, because there are no tRNAs to correspond to that, your ribosome will cut off the uh, growing peptide strand um, that you would have of amino acids. And so what pyromycin does is it will jump into the A site while, um, or at this critical moment, and it will link to the nascent peptide strand. And nascent just means growing. And so this link that happens at this step is very important because we are linking the uh, mRNA to the actual peptide. And so this link is the critical takeaway uh, that we get with pyromycin. And so um, after our protein has been translated,
the next step is to perform reverse transcription via an enzyme or uh, protein referred to as reverse transcriptase. So we're going to reverse transcribe the mRNA to uh, cDNA. And the reason we want to do this step is because RNA has a very short shelf life. It is a much weaker uh, molecule and solution than is DNA. And uh, the reasons for this should be uh, uh, intuitive because we want uh, DNA, which is the blueprint of our cells, to be a very strong, stable molecule that won't be um, disrupted easily. And we want mRNA because it's a very uh, pretty easy to make molecule. Um, so yeah, so um, putting it into the cDNA form is important for the next step in which we're going to um, expose the um, various mRNA, mRNA protein pyromycin molecules to our target. And we do this in something referred to as affinity chromatography. And in affinity chromatography, uh, we'll have our protein of interest present, so POI, will be exposed to uh, the mRNA, um, I'm sorry, the now cDNA protein fragments. And if by chance the mRNA, which is now cDNA, coded for some protein that had a high affinity for uh, your protein of interest, it will stick around. And uh, in your solution, uh, when we wash away, sorry, the bad uh, segments, and then we elute the good segments or fragments, uh, we will now have arrived at proteins that have a structure very close or closer to uh, what we want in our uh, final product, the molecule we're designing to have a high affinity for some target. And so the uh, final step after we have a solution containing fragments that had a good affinity for our target is to uh, perform PCR to amplify PCR the good stuff, <laughs> the good cDNA, and then repeat. And we do this as needed in order to, and the more we do this, the better a final result we are get because we will get because we are essentially simulating natural selection uh, in vitro very rapidly through this process. And so this concludes how we can use mRNA display to find proteins that will have a good affinity for a target molecule that we can actually use in industry. And so, um, yeah, I hope you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.